All right, welcome today, boys and girls. We're going to take a look at triangle proofs. And with all of these proofs, there's going to be some patterns that I'm sure you'll be able to pick up on right away. So let's take a look at our very first one. We've got to write a two column proof. We're given some information. We've got to prove some information. So what we're going to do first is write down our given information. So to start off with, we're going to take our first segment, yx is congruent to yz. And we're going to write that down as given. And then our second statement, angle x, y, w is congruent to angle z, y, w. And again, that's given. Now, right after I write down my given information, what I want to do is mark that on my diagram. So that first one, y, x is congruent to y, z. So I'm going to mark that just like that on my diagram. Now the other piece of information that I'm given is the angle x, y, w, so that's right here, is going to be congruent to angle z, y, w, and that one is right here. So I want to make sure that I put those marks on my pictures, and that's kind of given me a little bit of information to go at. Now, when I look at that picture, I'm kind of starting to see some things come together, and the next piece that I want to actually take a look at is this piece right here, this y, W piece. Now that piece is going to be congruent to itself. So now I've got to make two congruent hash marks tags on it. And it's going to be congruent to itself by the reflexive property of segment congruent. So what I'm going to do is write that YW is congruent to itself, YW. And my reason is going to be the reflexive property of segment congruence. So now that I've got that, I want to kind of analyze my diagram a little bit. And if you can kind of pay attention a little bit up here, I've got two sides and an included angle of a triangle congruent to two sides and a congruent angle in another triangle. So what I want you to do is pay attention to this spot right here. This piece is going to be congruent to this piece. My two angles are congruent. And then this piece is going to be congruent to itself. So using a side angle side congruence postulate, I'm going to have triangle X, Y, W congruent to angle Z, Y, W. And again, that's going to be a side angle side congruence postulate. Once I've got that, I'm going to go back and take a look at my prove. And the prove, whatever you got to prove, that's always going to be your last step. So X, W is going to be congruent to ZW. Now the reason why for that, sometimes textbooks will abbreviate that or maybe your teacher will abbreviate that CPCTC and that just means corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So a lot of times in, in some standardized tests you'll see it written out like this corresponding parts of and then the little congruent symbol and the triangle symbol. So that's how you would, um, that's one way you could write that reason right there. So that's it for example number one. And again, pretty straightforward. You, you've got your couple of pieces in the triangle that are congruent. You're going to use a property to get another piece congruent. Prove the two triangles are congruent. And then last, you're going to have the corresponding parts of congruent triangles. You're going to use that. Now let's take a look at example two. Again, we're going to go ahead and mark our information on our diagram this time if we want first. So IJ is going to be congruent to LJ. And HJ, so that's right here, is going to be congruent to KJ. So that part's right here. Now this kind of problem, I like to call this the bow tie kind of problem because it looks like a bow tie. And anytime you've got this piece in here, uh, you've got this going on, this angle right here and this angle right here, both of those are going to be congruent because they're vertical angles. And if you recognize that right off the bat, you're golden. All right, so that's going to be a pattern that I want you guys to really look for anytime you have figures like this. So we pretty much have everything done here. Then we can take a look at our picture and we can actually see why it would be congruent because of the way the diagram is marked. So let's go ahead and lay out all these pieces here in our proof. Go ahead and write down your given information and your reason and your statement to start with. And then let's go ahead and see what you have for statement number three. So how did you do with statement number three? Were you able to come up with that on your own? Angle IJH is congruent to angle LJK. Hopefully, you were able to see that from the markings on our diagram, and you were able to put in the correct reason all vertical angles are congruent. For example, number four, see if you can go ahead and name the triangles and the reason for that one. Go ahead and hit pause, and then see if you got it right. So how'd you do with statement number four? And the reasoning.
Hopefully you're okay on that one, a side angle, side congruence, postulate. And then lastly, of course, we've got our last piece that we've got to prove IH is going to be congruent to LK because, and again, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Wow, that sure is a lot to write. So that's it for example two. Now example three is almost the same exact thing as example two. So if you think you understand example two, go ahead and try example three totally on your own. So let's take a look at that, what example number three looks like. And what I want you to do is go ahead and try this one on your own. You should be able to fill out steps one, two, and five on the statement side totally on your own without even thinking about it. Steps three and four, go back and take a look at example number two, and I think you'll be all set and on your way for that. So when you're ready, go ahead and hit pause, stop it, get it done, and then unpause it and come back and see how you did. So how'd you do with this one? For steps one and two, you should have AC is congruent to EC and BC is congruent to DC, and both of those reasons are given. All right, make sure that you mark your diagram appropriately for those two steps. And then on statement number three, again, in our bow tie kind of picture here, our bow tie kind of problem, we take a look at angles ACB being congruent to angle ECD because all vertical angles are congruent. And then our triangles are congruent by side angle side congruence postulate. And then lastly, step number five, we've got A is congruent to angle E because corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. So that's it. If you got all that correct, Give yourself a hand. You totally are a rock star. You're getting this stuff now. Fourth example, we're going to go ahead and get after that one together. That one's going to be a little bit different than what we've got in these couple of problems. Now again, go ahead and write down the two pieces of given information and mark your diagram. And then we'll see what we've got to do next. How'd you do so far? Angle A and angle C. That's your first statement. Your reason is given. and Be sure you mark that in your diagram now. Don't get lazy. Make sure you put those angle congruence marks in each one of those spots. And then our second statement is BD bisects angle ABC. And again, because it's given. Now, let's think about this for a second. If BD, so this piece right here, BD, if that's going to bisect angle ABC, then what that means is it's going to chop that angle in half. So this piece, the angle ABD, that's going to be the same thing is what's on the other side where angle DBC is. So those two angles are going to be exactly the same because they just got bisected. The angle ABC was bisected to create those two smaller angles. So now what we're going to do next then is say, okay, then we've got angle ABD is going to be congruent to angle CBD. And what I want you to do is pay attention to that order because notice angle A corresponds with angle C. And B, of course, corresponds to itself, and so does D. But look at the order, because the order does matter. Now, the reason for that is going to be by the definition of an angle bisector. Because think about it like this. An angle ABC just got bisected by BD, so we're going to use that information to make those two angles congruent. Now, our third piece that we need. Now, take a look at our diagram. Angle A right here, then this piece of angle B and then angle C and this piece of angle B. We've got those two parts. We've got an angle and an angle in each one of our triangles. Now, now anytime two triangles share a side, a lot of times that's going to come into play because that side, in this case BD, the one that served as our angle bisector, that's also shared by both of the smaller triangles. So that side is going to be congruent to itself because why? Yeah, you know the reason why. That's right, because of the reflexive property of segment congruence. So BD is congruent to itself for that reason. And now if I take a look at my picture, I can kind of see what's going on there. I'm going to have those two triangles congruent because why? Yeah, you know the reason for that too. That's right. Those two triangles are going to be congruent by the angle, angle, side congruence theorem. So you got this now. And then of course our last step, we're going to have AB congruent to CB because why? Yeah, I mean you got this stuff now corresponding parts of congruent triangles. Yep, they're congruent. They're congruent. Corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. That's our reason for step number six, and we are done with this junks. You guys got this down solid now, so make sure you take a look over these, and we'll see you again soon in class. All right, you guys have a great day. Peace out.